Welcome into our countdown to tip off interview series. Today I'm visiting with Darren Grover, head coach of Southeastern Oklahoma. Coach, normally Joey gets to interview you. And, and finally, I said, I want to jump in there. We go back a long way. So uh, it's been a while, but it's good to visit with you. It's good to see you, Michael. Like I said, it's been a while. Pandemic has caused all kinds of problems like that, but uh, it's good to see you. Yep. So I've started the interviews with each coach the same way. We go back to last year and and for you, it even goes back a little bit farther because we finished that 2020 championship. You all win the tournament championship. Last year, you uh, get to the championship game. It's just been a wild ride. So let's 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 put a bow on COVID-19 and then move forward. How do you kind of recap what it's been like the last mainly just talking about last season? Yeah, it was I don't I think that uh, we're beating a dead horse if we just continue to talk about the challenges that we all faced and we all we all were in it together because we all faced those same challenges. I'm hoping that we're you know that we're gonna be past some of that. I know that I know that COVID is still with us, but uh, some of the issues that we faced, everything from masking to social distancing to no crowds, it looks like much of that is is at least getting better, if not eliminated altogether. So we're looking forward just to having some normalcy. One thing is, it's just nice to have practice and not have a mask over your face trying to scream through the mask. And so that just just communication alone, that's probably the biggest challenge really with the, with uh, for me was just communication uh, with our players uh, during that period. And so it's tough whenever you're on the floor coaching and you're trying to talk to them and describe different things. And you kind of forgot what some of them looked like until their mask came off for their game time. Yep. So let's talk about um, returning players first. And I've asked each coach to kind of let us know your seniors that are coming back for that fifth year or, or, or if you had any that left, what's that look like for you? Well, our two uh, COVID seniors and one of them is a, is a six year. She's this is she's going to do our six year as Chandler Kemp. So she did decide to go ahead and come back. She actually kind of got a bonus because with COVID, she had a knee injury and uh she wasn't released until January. And had we not had COVID, she wouldn't have participated in that year because she wouldn't want to use just half of a year. So she was able to play play this past year and then she, she got her a bonus year. And then Jordan Benson decided sometime in the spring that she was going to go ahead and uh, take the, take advantage of it. And that's what I tell all of them. Hey, not very many kids get to take advantage of something like this and you get to work your whole life. So take advantage and go ahead and, and play another year. And Jordan Benson opted to do that. We lost Katie Brandon, which is a big, a big loss for us from last year's team. She was a big part of what we did over the last four years. She opted to, she got a, a teaching and coaching job in Texas and, and opted to do that. So we're happy that she was able to get that because ultimately that's what we're trying to do is prepare, prepare people to go out to, to work, but uh, uh, we will miss her. So a lot is going to be on Cameron Cantwell and Briley Moon returning. Let's talk about the two of them and kind of your expectations for them this year. Well, they've they've come in in, in really good shape and, and have really led us. And I, what do you say about both of them? I mean, they're as two good of guards as, as you'll see anywhere across the country. You know, uh, Briley Moon is – and I've coached a lot of really good shooters. She's the best I've ever coached. Uh, so – I put pressure on her to continue to do that, even with the three-point line moving moving out. Uh, so she she's back and and ready to go, and and we're gonna count on her to do what she's done for the last three years. And then Cameron Cantwell, the same thing. I mean, she's uh, she's back and and doing a good job for us in practice. They good thing is is they know what to do immediately when they walk out there. They they've done run our system long enough to know that they're gonna go out and compete hard and execute what we want. I don't want to gloss over that because you've coached a lot of really good shooters, as you said. I've seen some of them over the years, but what makes what makes Briley Moon such a great shooter? Let's talk about that for a second. She makes them. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, I knew you, you know, might give me an answer like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, she. You know, and really comes down to that. She she uh, she's shoots it kind of a unit in a unique way. She really actually doesn't square up completely, which I know there's some people teaching that now nowadays. We were always taught when you and I played that you had to square up completely. Yeah. She kind of shoots it a little bit like sideways to some degree. Of course, when she when she's talking to you, she actually kind of looks at you out of the corner of her eye. So I guess that's where that stems from. I don't know. But she uh yeah, that really starts and finishes with that. She can get off get her shot off kind of it quickly and in, in spots that you didn't think that she could 
and she she knocks them down. And we chart all of our shooting through practice. And I'm talking about shooting drills. And and uh, we've had some really good shooters come through here. And, and with those numbers, it backs it up. Her her shots and games go in, but uh, it happens in practice as well. So I know you've got other returners. If you want to talk about those, we we can do that now. But also want to mention your new players because, you know. Everybody kind of still went out and did their recruiting, but as you already said, you had a player who kind of chose late to stay. So that's that's one less spot that gets filled with a recruit. So talk about some of your new players and the recruiting process and then maybe just some of your other returners you're going to be counting on. Well, I'll start with some of our returners that we're going to be counting on. And, and I had, had already mentioned Chandler Kemp and, and Jordan Benson coming back, which gives us a lot of experience there. But uh, Hayden Williams, who's been with us a long time, she she's uh, back again and and really having her best preseason that she's ever had. So we're excited about her. And Casey Monk is is back as as well, and she gives us some, some size inside. And she, along with Hayden, is having her best preseason. Now, hey, preseason is one thing; the season's another. You got to come in and start producing like that whenever you start the year. One thing that we were able to do is, is recruit some size in. Uh, it's it's always hard to, to sign uh, bigger players. And as you know, you've been around us a long time. We've had to do it with uh, some undersized kids. And some of that has been by personal choice, but other times it's been uh, uh, just out of just what the players that we could get. And so we have to do some of that with smoke and mirrors, trying to, to trick people as far as using smaller players. But uh uh, we, we, we recruited some size in, uh, with, uh, uh, Daisy LaPac as, is a, is a fre- homeschool freshman out of, out of the Oklahoma city area. Avery Weeks is a girl from out of Kingston, this local here. Uh, both of those are, are bigger players. We have, uh, Katoya Woods out of, out of Texas, along with, uh, K- Caitlin Kabisky out of Texas. So that gives us four post players that we feel good about. Uh, some of our returner, pl- returning players, We've got twin sisters uh, out of Texas that uh, are coming back from last year in Grace and Amy Alverson. Uh, so both of them will, will give us some experience. Uh, Lauren Beeson comes back for us. So she, she's a shooter and can also take it off the dribble. And then uh, along with uh, Annie Anderley is a freshman a shooter out of Munster, Texas. And then Macy Book out as a returning player out of uh, Texas as well. All right. So one thing that we have talked about with other coaches is a full schedule. That's the goal. Non-conference games, travel, a lot more of what we've been used to up until up until last year. So tell us about your non-conference schedule. And uh, I think Fort Hayes State is up first. Is that right, Coach? Yeah, maybe the, maybe the hardest non-conference schedule that I've ever I've ever scheduled. So it's uh, blame me if, if we <laughs> take them on the on the nose on this one. But yeah, we open up with Fort Hayes State. And I fully expect, you know, they were picked to win their league, the MIAA, which is as tough a league as there is in America. I fully expect that they'll be a top top 10, maybe top five uh, team coming in that, in that uh, the first WBCA poll. Uh, and then we, we uh, in that same classic, we've got Missouri Western. Both those games are at Missouri Western. We've also got Texas A&M Commerce, who's, who's really a top 10 program right now. Jason Burt has done a great job with them. So that'll be challenging. We're playing uh, Texas women's as well. And as along with Oklahoma Christian. So we're, our hands are full with our, with our non-conference. I mean, like I said, it may be the best non-conference schedule that, uh, that I've ever had here in 17 years. And so that's a lot of non-conference games. And, and so we're, we're looking forward to those games. Do you uh, do you talk much with your team about how to do things on the road after last year where you didn't travel much, or does that kind of take care of itself and the players kind of know know how to handle all of that? Well, the, the returners are all going to be – that's not that that big of a deal uh, as far as that goes. And we actually had a few road games yeah. last year uh, we, we, that we had – we stayed the night. Not a lot of people stay the night. We, we When we went to Alva twice, we stayed the night in both of those games and uh, – but uh, it'll be the Arkansas ones where you're staying the night multiple nights that, that the freshmen will have to get used to. But they have to get used to it anyway. So as far as our returners, uh, I, it'll be like tapping their foot. I don't think that'll be any big deal. But uh, the freshmen have to get used to the travel anytime. All right, Coach Darren Grover. Well, thank you so much for the time and good luck to your team this year. Thanks a lot, Michael. 